before we talk in detail about the specific stresses that are associated with Le Chatelier's principle, I want to briefly review what uh, Le Chatelier's principle first assumes. And that is that the system we are talking about is at equilibrium. So prior to us, the experimenter, introducing this stress to the system, we're talking about a system that's at equilibrium, a system where the forward and reverse reaction rates are equal and the reactant and product concentrations are constant. Okay, remember that. Equilibrium, equal rates, constant concentration. Now, that being said, we can start talking about each specific stress and how the system will respond to undo that stress. So again, we have uh, a system that's at equilibrium, a closed system at equilibrium, and the first stress that we'll talk about is concentration. Now, in order to make concentration a stress, we have to increase or decrease one of the reactant or product concentrations. That's how it becomes a stress, to either add or take away uh, from a species on the right or the left of an equation. So the rule of thumb here is that whatever we add, the system will shift away from. Whatever we take, the system will shift toward. In other words, whatever we add, the system will use up. It will consume. Whatever we take, the system will replace. So let's look at this equation here <clears throat> with um, a reaction between ammonia and oxygen to produce nitrogen monoxide, water, and heat. So we have an exothermic reaction. I'm going to do this, I'm going to approach every single question very specifically. Identify the stress, then I'll identify the shift, and lastly, the third step is to identify what happens to each of the individual species. Okay? So the first question has us adding H2O. So here's the H2O and the mathematical symbol for addition is the plus sign. Now when I add whatever I add, the system will shift away from. So this double arrow here is actually going to increase in the reverse direction. Both the forward and the reverse rates are going to go up but the reverse rate is going to go up, going to increase by more. It's because more collisions are happening. Um, that's why both reactions increase, both reaction rates will increase, because the added concentration is going to cause more collisions. But it's going to increase by more in the reverse direction, because initially the biggest increase in collisions is happening on the right side which means we're going to, uh, the products will be colliding to produce more reactants. It's going to cause a shift in this direction. Now, when the system shifts to the left or toward the products, what is that going to do with the NH3 concentration? First of all, we have a shift to the left. And the concentration of NH3, that's what these brackets mean, the concentration of NH3, well, let's find NH3. Here it is. If we're shifting toward NH3, that means the NH3 concentration will increase. Okay, that's this arrow here. It means the system shifts to the left, and everything on the left side will increase in concentration, Everything on the right side will decrease in concentration. Let's take a look at the second question. Again, let's find out. First, identify the stress. The stress in this case is adding O2, circle O2, and we add it. Add away. So I'm going to cause a shift to the right. Find the species we're talking about now that's going to be affected, and that is the NO concentration. 
here. That's on the right, the direction the arrow is pointing, which means that concentration would increase. So we're talking about a system at equilibrium, a stress that we apply, and how the system shifts to undo that stress. What's the result of the shift is our final objective. Next question. What's the stress? Adding H2O. Find my H2O, and I add it. I cause a shift to the left toward the reactants. And now the species being affected is NO. NO is actually on the side away from the direction the arrow is pointing. So the system is shifting away from NO, meaning the NO concentration is going to go down. We added a product, so products will get used up. Products will be consumed. Whatever we add, the system will shift away from. The system will use up. So the NO concentration will decrease. Fourth question on this one. For concentration, now we're adding NO. The system will shift. To the left, now we're asked which concentrations would decrease. We're talking about concentrations that would decrease. So the concentrations that are going to decrease are on the side away from which the arrow is pointing. All right, that means everything over here on the product side, we added products, so the system shifts away from products. It will use up the products. The H2O will go down. And the heat, now heat's not a concentration, technically, all right, um, but heat would be used up. Heat would be consumed. So the concentrations that would decrease would be the H2O, and then I'd put an asterisk next to heat. Technically, it's not a concentration, but heat would be consumed because we're shifting away from heat. Now we're looking at when concentrations are decreased. So we're staying with the same stress concentration, the same factor. But the stress now is going to be to decrease that factor. So I, I should rephrase that. Same factor affecting rate, but a different stress in that we're not adding this factor or increasing the factor. We are decreasing the factor. We're decreasing a species concentration. Same approach. First, we identify... Um, the stress. So we're going to remove oxygen. The mathematical symbol for removal, here's oxygen, would be the minus sign, subtraction. So our rule here is take toward. Whatever I take, the system will shift to replace. So the system is going to shift toward the oxygen, meaning it's going to shift to the left. If the system shifts to the left, the NH3 concentration, which is right here on the left, the system is shifting toward it, which means the NH3 concentration will increase. By replacing the O2, we're also going to increase the concentration of NH3, the other reactant. Next stress. If we remove water, find water, <laughs> subtraction of water, take toward, the system is going to shift toward the right, toward the products. Which species are we being asked about in terms of the resulting effect? It's NO, circle NO, and since we're shifting toward NO, that concentration will increase. And our fourth question about removing, or I'm sorry, uh, Removing some of a species or decreasing a concentration is removing 
again, O again. Causing, take toward, a shift to the right. Now a shift to the right means all product concentrations will increase. And that's what we're being asked about. Which concentrations are going to increase? All right. That would mean, and technically, so would this guy. As soon as I remove NO, guess what? NO concentration will go up. Whatever I take, the system will shift to replace. Whatever I remove, the system replaces. Uh, H2O concentration will increase. And technically, it's not a concentration, but so will heat. And then, and just a quick question on this, uh, something I forgot to add. For number four, on our first set of concentration questions, when we added NO here, not only would the H2O concentration decrease and the heat decrease, but technically so would the NO concentration. I forgot to mention that. Okay. And that's it. Remember your rule of thumb is add away, take toward, another explanation. I added my nitrogen monoxide. By adding that, it causes the system to shift away, meaning to the left. That's going to decrease every concentration on the product side. Add away, take toward.